Hey there, over the next few minutes, we're gonna talk about for loops in blueprints. So here, I have a really simple blueprint uh, based off of Actor. There's currently nothing in it, so uh, just so we can see it in the level, I'll go into Add Component, we'll drop down a billboard, so we get a little dragon head, and we can go straight over to the graph. So a loop is really just a way for you to create a portion of your script that can repeat a certain number of times. Uh, a finite number of times, because once you get to infinity, you start to have problems. Uh, so let's go ahead and set something up. I'm going to jump over to my defaults real quick, and I've done this several times in other videos. I'm going to set my auto-receive input uh, to player zero so that I can just press keys and make stuff happen. Let's do something based off of the F key. Uh, I don't know, I just like the F key right now. And let's create a loop. So if you uh, right-click and type in the word loop, you have a bunch of different loops you can choose from. Uh, two of these are associated strictly with arrays. That'd be the for each and the for each with break. Uh, we're not going to mess with those right now. Really, all I want to focus on right now is just a plain Jane regular for loop. So uh, the way a loop works is you give this a first index and a last index, and it runs whatever is connected to loop body uh, the number of times as it counts from first to last. So. Let me uh, go ahead and set this up real quick. We'll do a unpressed, we'll make this work, and we're just going to hard code this for now. We're going to set the first index to be 1, and the last index to be 10. And for simplicity's sake, I just want to put uh, print some stuff out to the screen. So uh, let's right click, and we'll do a log, uh, which is the old school name for print string. And actually, let me slide that out of the way. Not, not too far out of the way. We'll put it like over here, because I'm actually going to show you guys a sort of a little hidden trick. We're going to do a format text. And let's say um, the loop has run. And then we'll open braces, um, index, close braces, times, exclamation point. And when I press Enter, it automatically grabs whatever I typed within those braces, and it makes an input for it. So I'm going to take the current index and plug that into index, and you see that it automatically converts that for me. So we go from an int to text, which is pretty cool. And then we'll take our result, and we will print that out to a string. Now the only thing we need to do is make sure we cover our print string, run that all the way back to the loop body. And then finally, we'll take our completed pin, and we will add one more print string or type log, <laughs> whatever, and we'll set this to the loop is done. I wanted to type the loop, the loop, the loop is on fire, but I decided not to at the very last minute. Uh, I will take the uh, text here, though, and I'll change its color to um, something red, just so we can see the difference in the two strings firing off. OK, so let's hit compile, and we'll move this out of the way. Let's go ahead and bring a copy of our blueprint into the scene. And we can't see it because we're in game mode, so there it is. And we can hit play. And uh, let me go ahead and reach back there and turn my sound off because I don't want that to, to distract anybody. And I feel like it could because my speakers are terrible on this machine. And if I hit the F key, you can see the loop doing its job. So I'm going to come over here where there's shadows so it's easy to see on the contrast of your monitor. So boom, the loop has run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then it says the loop is done. No problem, right? And when you're doing something like this, where the loop has only got to run like 10 times, you know, my computer's eating that for breakfast. That's no problem at all. But you have to be a little bit careful uh, when it comes to very, very large loops, because your computer may or may not like that. Now, I'm going to show you how to do something that I'm going to warn you could cause a crash. That could happen, depending on how many zeros you put in here. We're going to say one zero. Let's, what do you want to try? Do you want to try 10,000? So we're going to make our little loop count to 10,000 real quick, just to prove a point. And that point is that while you're playing the game, as soon as a loop starts, it is going to pause execution until the loop is complete. Watch. When I hit F, oh, there's a hitch. And then suddenly, we get our end result all at once. See that? So uh, just to really show that, now I'm going to add one more factor of 0. So we're going to do 100,000. Now, my video will keep up. I'm not necessarily sure I would recommend you to do this on your end, but you know, if, you're, if, if you also like to live dangerously, then uh, you can do it. So I'll hit F. Oh, everything's it's stuck. It's not moving. What's going on? And it's a little scary for just a minute. And then after X number of seconds, boom, we get the loop has run 100,000 times. But that's just the important thing to keep in mind with loops, right? They're going to halt execution until they're done. So generally speaking, you want to keep your loops 
uh, a little lighter than, say, 10,000 iterations. So we'll set this back to something like 10, so we're a little less likely to break. So that's really all there is to for loops. Uh, now, this first index and that last index, you can, uh, you can you know, make those dynamic. You can drive those off variables that change based off what is going on in your, uh, in your levels. So really, this is just anything that you want to have happen uh, a set number of times. So that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.